Let's clean this log burner. Not just any old clean, but a deep clean. We're gonna get down and deep and dirty, baby. Let's do this. Aww. A few things that you're gonna need. First and most important thing you're gonna need is to save yourself a hell of a lot of ear ache. A dust sheet, get a dust sheet down. Otherwise, you're just gonna get moaned at by the other half saying, I told you to put a dust sheet down, didn't I? Now look at the bloody mess in there. We're gonna have to get the carpet cleaned. I've got my dust sheet, got me over, got some gloves, got some pink stuff to clean the glass. What else have I got? Oh, and I'm trying that out for the very first time. It is the Chimney Typhoon brush system. Power brush system, may I add. So we're gonna give that a try and uh, see what happens with that. I've got my dust sheet down. Next thing I'm gonna do is obviously open my door. Now, we have not opened that door since the last burn. And that last burn was probably in April time, I'd say March, April. So it's been a good four or five months. So I dread to think what it's like inside there. So let's get this door open and then we'll start dismantling the inside of the burn. Oh my days, I don't know if you can see that. There is cobwebs. There's a bit of soot that's probably fell down from the chimney. It is ready for a good deep clean. I do clean it every week. When I say clean it, I'll clean the glass and I'll give it a hoover out. Really good hoover. But other than that, that is it. Once a week, every Sunday, religiously, I'll clean it out. But it's the first time that I'm gonna be using that chimney power brush uh, system. So hopefully it does the job really well this year. First thing I'm gonna do is get this door off. There we go. Next thing I'm gonna do is take my grates out. Put them to the side as well on my dust sheet. Not on the carpet. Then I'm gonna get my little brush. Brush all that into the bottom of the ashtray. So the log burner we've got, you can actually take the grills out of the bottom, just like that, and they all come out, which is really good for cleaning. So I'll take all them out. I've got an absolute massive amount of ash in the bottom of there that's probably filled my tray up. There you go. So need to empty that. Right, so my tray's empty. I'm now gonna put that back inside. And that'll be to catch any ash that's gonna fall out when or soot when we clean the chimney out. So the next thing, I wanna get the baffle plate out and the bricks out of the back. Right, so that's up in the air. Oh my God. Get the back one out. There's one out. What the hell is that? It's the other one. The side one. The bricks and the plate is out and that is what's just come out from behind the back of the bricks and the fire plate. The inside of my flue and my pipe. You see that all right? There you go. How amazing is that? Let's get this open for the first time. In the box, little carry pouch, rods. <coughs> Grow up, lad. Plastic sheet. Next thing is the head. And inside that you get the attachment for the drill. There you go. Got a little Allen key with you. Phillips on there. Right, so you can't go wrong putting this together. All you've got on each of your little plastic uh, rods, a little spring, just like that. And on the head, there's a hole where it sits into. All you've got to do, push your spring in, slip it onto the head, and then it just pops straight in. So if you want to release it, all you've got to do, get the Allen key they've given you with a posi on, Push that and then it'll just slide straight off. The only key just slots into the top of there. I'm going to be guessing that you can take all this apart and change these strands if you need to. Uh, but we don't need to mess about that with that. All I'm going to do is just tighten that up. Make sure it's not going to come off. Same process as when you're putting your head together, putting your rods together. Push that in, slide that in and they'll just pop in. It's as easy as that and they are nice. 
and flexible. So we shouldn't have any problems, hopefully. Famous last words. Plastic sheet that you get in your kit, I've cut a length off there. And what I'm thinking is wrap it around my burner. We might be able to see if there's anything coming into there. So I've got some tape, so just some packing tape. I'm gonna tape that around there, to stick a hole in the front and then go up. Right, so I've taped the plastic to my log burner. I've reinforced the front hole with some tape. I've thread the first rod through, putting it on the head. And all we're gonna do then is fasten the rest of the plastic to the burner and we are ready to go. So I've got my attachment on my drill. There you go. Same again, just on a little spring. So that just pops onto end of your rod. Now it does say in the instructions that it needs to be running between 400 and 1800 RPM. So it's always got to be moving, it says. That's a good start. Makes a right bloody noise, doesn't it? So all I'm going to do now is keep feeding the rods on until I get where I think it needs to go, but it is producing quite a lot of suck. So if you get your hand on there like that, it just helps the rod just shoot up your flue. Literally takes two minutes each rod. If that, how long did that take? 30 seconds? Straight in, no missing. Ready for the next one. That is my last rod just there. So I know roughly my flue pipe is probably, probably eight and a half, nine meters long. It's a nine meter kit, that's my last rod. So when I've got to put my last rod on, all I've done is I've just pushed it up. I know it says not to, but I've pushed it up until I can't push it no more. I don't want to go in with my drill and have that spinning round right at the top because if it catches anything up there, then I'm going to be screwed. So all I've done, I've just pushed it up. I'm going to go outside now and see if we can see it. So let's go and have a look. Probably too hard to see. I might just go and get my iPhone, take a picture on it, but it is definitely right at the top of there. So I've reached the top. So what I'm thinking is, because now I know where the top is, at the top of my chim chim chimney, what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some tape and just tape the last one, put some tape around it, pull that back out a little bit, probably two thirds of the way up it, and then I'll know when to stop next year when I'm going back up. That'll be my last rod. So now I know that is my last rod, that's where I need to go to. So I'll spin it a few more times up and down and then I'll bring it out and then we'll see just how much is in there. That is it. I think it's had enough so i'm going to take them all out now i'm sliding the rod straight into the carry case that they give you to avoid any mess keeps all the dust down and everything like that you don't get a bit mucky i don't want to say it obvious but could you imagine back in the day when them little kids used to go away oh the little kids oh cleaning chim chim in his out <laughs> anyway let's get this last one out hopefully the head is still on it we go. oh yep we're down Oh my God, let's pull it out. What's it gonna be? Is it a boy, is it a girl? Oh my God, it's ginger. Throw it back. Let's get this plastic off. Whoa. That is a decent amount in there. Holy smokes. Let's try and empty that. So all I'm gonna do is get some of this and chuck it into my bow kit. Holy cow, look at that. Right, so I've got as much out as I can, there you go. And that's my bucket, it's a 16 litre bucket, it's about half full. So a decent amount has come out, I was quite surprised actually. So, let's get this thrown away. Then I'm gonna get me over out, over everything up, and then we'll give everything a little clean and we'll get it put back together and that'll be done. So when you're using that chimney typhoon, it's going around in your flue and it's also bashing. Obviously the head's spinning around, but the pipe's also spinning in it in the inside of the flue as well. So it's caused a bit of my cement to come off around the bottom of there. Luckily, I've got some 
just there so I can put some more on. So just be aware when you're using it, obviously the head's spinning, but the pipe is also spinning what's inside and it's bashing on. So yeah, be prepared to put some new cement around there. Right, so they've had a clean with a wire brush, believe it or not. I know they don't look like it, but they have. I've got all the crap off them. I've given my bricks quick brush down with my soft brush just to get any particles or anything that's lying about on them. So the next thing to do is put everything back inside. So let's put everything back inside. So before I put everything back inside, this is what my flue looked like before. I put the power brush system in and this is what it looks like after and what a difference it has made unbelievably clean i can't believe it so there she goes back together throttle plate or baffle plate whichever you want to call it is in the bricks are in the grills are in nice and clean yeah so that part of the job is done what we've got to do now is clean that and then we'll give it a quick wipe down. I'll put that cement back on. And then we're finished. Yay! I always clean my glass with the pink stuff. There you go. Now, I know you can use ash, get a damp rag and clean that, but I prefer to use this. So this is what I use. Especially the last thing you want to be doing is getting some mucky ash out of there and cleaning your glass when you can just get some kitchen roll. Dab it in here. Clean your glass. Get some more finish it off, chuck it on your fire, and then it'll burn later on, won't it? So that's what I use, so that's what I'm gonna use now. Not going to kitchen roll, so I'm gonna have to use bog roll. Put my lid off. Decent blob skit. And all I'm gonna do, let's clean it. Get a bit more. And there you go. One super clean door. Beer log burner. So all I've got is a damp cloth. I'm just gonna go around now, give it a little clean, try and get some of the soot off, get the door put back on, get that cement put back on, some new cement, and then we're good to go. Give it a wipe down, top and bottom, there we go. Just to give it a nice clean, no chemicals on that, it's just water on my cloth. And then we'll be good to go. It's had a nice wipe down. Next thing is to get the door on. And it should just slide onto them pins just there. Get on your bastard. Yeah, a frame of the door, a wipe. Look at the difference in that now. It's finished, it's clean, it's gleaming. It's looking absolutely fabulous. Just look at that. I've even put some logs in it, look, for aesthetic purposes. Obviously the water's drying still, but clean the arse, the tools are back. Need to drop my fan back on. There you go, it's my biggest one. It's the, it's the only fan I've got. <laughs> Hilarious, hilarity continues throughout this video right until the end. So yeah, that's it, it is done. That is how I clean my log burner every year. So it was my first time using the Chimney Typhoon power brush system and it is a great bit of kit. 50 quid I think I paid just under on Amazon. Well worth the money. It's going to cost you more than that on a chimney sweep to come and do it every year. £7,500 a year, something like that. I think uh, people's chucking about on Facebook in quotes and things. So it's worth getting. If you're willing to do it yourself, there is a bit of mess. You're cleaning a chimney out for God's sake. But it's worth it. It's a great DIY project. If you like doing them, then you're going to enjoy doing this just like I have. So, on that footing, I'm off. I'll see you later. Ta-da. Be good. And look after you, Sen. Bye-bye.